I'm Patrick Bailey with whiteboardcoder.com. Today is August 14th, 2015, and in this video I'll be going over how to install and set up Tomcat 8 on Ubuntu 14.04. This video went a lot longer than I thought it would. As a result, I had to split it up into three videos. This is the second part of the video. If you want to go to the first part or the third, click on the link to those videos now. But if you've already watched the first part, let's just continue on. Okay, now we need to set up some variables like uh, Java underscore ops, which is going to define how your JVM is started. Now this can be a little bit of some JVM foo when, when things come down to it. But when it comes to Tomcat, what you're probably going to do is you're going to want to edit... Um, well, I don't even think it actually exists. You want to create it, but it does reference it. Let me just make sure. So the 10 by 13 apps, Tomcat, bin. Yeah, they don't have it. So there is a cla There's a file you can make in here. Call it uh, set env environment.sh that doesn't exist, but if you make it, the default scripts will reference it. So that's what you want to do. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do sudo switch user dash tomcat. So and then run this command as tomcat as the tomcat user. So it I don't have to go change uh, the owner of it after the fact. So I'll do. No. Yeah, it's going to be a pain in the butt. So I'll do this. Tomcat bin. Oh, I totally ugly fied that. Pseudo. Let me just clear the whole thing here. So you can read what I'm typing. Pseudo switch user dash tomcat dash command apps tomcat this video went a lot longer than I thought it would. As a result, I had to split it up into three videos. I think this needs to this be is the close. second part of the video. If you want to go to the first oh, well, part or the gone. third, click on the Which appropriate the links now. Bad. But you get the gist. So, ah, gist, eh? Okay, so now we'll start this. Then bash custom environment variables for Tom cat okay so first thing I'm going to do is export Java home which in our case is user lib JVM Java 7 dash Oracle Jerry yep an export path equals Java home bin path, right? Looks right, yeah. And then this is going to be where we get into some JVM foo. So, and I'm not the best JVM foo guy, so I did a lot of research. So I'm going to be referencing a lot of stuff. And this may be long winded and slow but I'm going to refer to a lot of sites. Let's see, you could do all this in one export. Oh, command, but I am going to be long-winded. I'm typing my notes over here and explain why and add links. Okay, first, Oracle notes. Be a lot of URLs in here, and I'll put these. Well, I won't, I won't promise I'm going to put these all in the show notes, but they will be in this gist when I post it. Uh, kind of screwed that up there. There we go. So that'll get you a lot of information on the technical notes. Uh, another place says a. This one has a good visual of the, because it just has a good visual. Oh, kind of cut the front out there, didn't I? Yeah. And that one I'll show you real quick, because that one's a good one to refer to. This is a good place to go. Just go here and read this article, Visualizing Garbage Collection in the JVM. 
and this will probably help you understand and I'm not a garbage collection ninja by any sort any stretch of the imagination but you can go in here and you can start reading about the permanent generation the old generation the young generation which I'll define which you need to set up and define in here how you're going to use those but if you want a lot of good detailed information read this article what I'm going to do here is first set the server. Now I'm not setting it, this is still notes, but I'm def defining, I have these all in sections, so it kind of defines exactly what everything is doing. So I'll select the Java hotspot server, server JVM. The 64-bit version of the of the JDK supports the server VM. Oh, supports only. So it's like in the 64-bit version, you don't have an option. You don't need to, to define this. So in that case, the option is implicit. So it's redundant to today's world, but it makes me feel good. And so we would export Java ops equals dash server. So it's a little redundant in this world, but you know, it's a server. Uh, as long as you're running 64-bit, if you're running your 64-bit JVM, now you could just do this Java ops in one big go, but I'm separating them out so that you have detailed notes. XMS, uh, XMX. XMS sets the initial size of the heap. And XMS, XMX sets the maximum size of the heap. And here's a few links here. Now the argument is to make them the same size. But you can go to these URLs and read more about that. So I'll make them the same size. Uh, Java ops equals Java ops dash XMS. Now, of course, you want to tune this to your machine. I don't know what the best size is compared to how much memory you have. Uh, this particular VM, I think, this is just a test VM, so this is not even a server. This is not a, well, it is a server, but it's not anything special. Oh, I'm thinking about a different box. You know what? This only has 500 megs. That's not going to work too well, is it? Okay, let me pause this and go fix this machine. Okay, I fixed that real quick. So now, there we go, I got two gigs on that box. Anyway, okay, so let me go back to editing. Okay, so what size should it be? If In this case, I have two gigs, and so I'm doing half the size of the memory. You, might, you have other things running there. Um, I don't know what a good rule of thumb is. Maybe you start with half of the physical, well, physical or virtual, start with half of what the memory is. That might be a good place to start. But um, I don't know, maybe you should go read up on that and see what other ideas people have. I, I'm not tuning JVMs all the time, just tell you that. I'm just trying to give you a good place to start. Okay, boom. Uh, new size and max new size. Sets the size of the young generation. See, most newly created objects are made here. Objects that did not become un unre unreachable and survive the young generation heap are 
copy to the old generation. See, and I got a couple links here. And of course that site too, which I'll pull that back in here. So here is the young generation and the old generation. And so the X, you can see here's the XMS and here's the XMS. In our case, these are equal. And those added together make up the young generation and the old generation. Let's set the Java Ops on this. Java Ops. So new size equals 512 megs. So I just made it half the size in this case. Max new size. And a lot of things I was reading a lot of the things I was reading too was just saying making the same size. So perm size and uh, max perm size. Okay, now this place in memory stores stores classes or interned character strings and well I guess and it should be or it should be and there's a good place URL to check out and warning I was looking at some of this information and this is deprecated in Java 8. I happen to be using Java 7, so I need to use this, but in Java 8, you replace this with dash xx uh, meta space size. Just if you're using Java 8, be forewarned. So, Java Ops equals Java ops xx perm size equals 256 megs max perm size equals 256 megs okay looks good let me bring this image back in here again now you can see uh, here is the perm size and I don't want to say old school Java but in old school Java generic Java if you're just loading your classes and not doing anything special with them your classes don't change if that's what you're doing and you would put them here in this permanent storage and then your size doesn't need to change you don't even need to do garbage collection in here your classes go in there they don't move they don't change and you're done I'm talking old school Java now I'm gonna go in how to set up to actually do garbage collection here because other languages especially groovy will be creating classes on the fly all the time so you do have to do garbage collection here but again you need to tweak that based on your needs that might not be enough um, but you can also see how that actually expands the memory so what we're actually using now so I have a thousand twenty four for this section and 256 for this section so I'm using you know 1.25 gigs um, not the one. There's actually a little spot here that's being taken up in memory. Okay, perm size. Now some garbage collection stuff, which can be very confusing. And I'm sure I'm going to say something wrong, and if you're an expert and you know that I said something wrong, tell me, put a post in here, I'll put a note in here, I'll put a link in here, because this stuff is can be is very tricky. To get it just right. So use cons mark sweep garbage collection, also called the low latency garbage collection, since pausing time is very short. Now when you're running your Tomcat, one thing you don't want to have happen is for it to freeze up, to all of a sudden have to stop everything and do a garbage collection. So you're trying to reduce the time of that and this is one of the things that does that. Let's see. When this is enabled, it also enables plus use par new garbage collection. 
You can also name those that, which potentially speeds up your generation garbage collection by a factor equal to the number of CPUs. And here's a URL where you can do some more research on that. Uh, and then export Java ops equals Java ops xx plus use conk mark sweep garbage collection. There we go. Now to the next one. Okay. And next one is xx plus CMS increment incremental mode. I am not let's see, I'm not going to set this one, but it's worth mentioning. It has been oh, it has been deprecated in Java 8. It is useful when you have one or two when you only have a one or two CPU machine. It helps reduce latency by doing smaller garbage collections. See these sites for details. So I'm not going to set that, but it's worth knowing. Now, on this little virtual machine I have, it only has one virtual CPU. I'm not going to really use it live, so it's probably something you might want to set on this box. But also, it makes you a little weary to set things knowing that they're going away in Java 8. There we go. There's those two. Okay, now on to dash CMS class unloading enabled. Oh, there we go. This is what I was talking about before. In an old school Java program, classes are forever. But with modern languages like Groovy, classes are created at runtime. Every script may create a few new classes. With this set, the perm gen space will be garbage collected. Without this, you have a memory leak. Let's see, I got a note here. Must also have use conk mark sweep. garbage collection set for this to work, which we do have set up. And here's a site I found for it. There you go. And let's see, export Java ops equals Java ops dash xx CMS class Unloading enabled. Okay, so what that is doing, I'll bring this picture back over. Uh, here's your perm space, and so now it's being garbage collected. That's all it's, it's saying. It's also garbage collect this. Uh, in which case, if you're doing Groovy, you need that absolutely, and if you're not, you may not need it. Um, but I'm just trying to do a generic install of Tomcat that'll cover a lot of different types of installs, so you might as well turn it on. It, I don't see it affecting things greatly by doing garbage collection there. But if it does, you can just turn it off. Okay, what's next? I have 
disable explicit garbage collection. Oh, well, this is a no-brainer. Explicit call. Okay, explicit calls to system.gc are completely ignored. And there's a URL to check out. Um, so let's see, export Java ops Java ops dash xx disable explicit garbage collection. And so that just means no one can programmatically call garbage collection, which you probably wouldn't want them to do that anyway. And if they are doing that, you got other problems probably. But don't we all? Okay, heap dump pass. That's the file where the heap dump will write out its error. Kind of useful. So if there's a heap dump, it'll make an error file, and you can actually designate what where you want that file to be and what you want it to be named to. So dash xx. Uh, heap dump path equals so you want 10 by 13 logs tomcat 8 java heap dump pid and I think you can stick the pid in here let's see percentage p dot log there you go so now it should write out if there's a heap dump it should write it out to there uh, Java dot hot dot headless basically tells the JVM not to load hot libraries. Your your server is not a desktop. Basically, your server is not a desktop app. There is more to this rule. Than that. Um, yeah, let's see, if you want to go into it, check out. Got a few URLs here. Paste. Okay, and then export Java ops equals Java ops uh, dash d Java dot aw hot dot headless equals true. Okay, and then da, Java. So all that's saying is there's the abstract window tools, the libraries, and so we're not making windows as a server, so we're not drawing to the window. Oh, there actually still are some tools in there you can use, as I understand it, because you may want to do a few things. Um, but if you want to go into detail, you can see what it removes and what it doesn't remove. Typically, you're not going to want it, so I'm just going to remove it. But if you need it, you can put it back. Java.security.egd Okay, this one is a bit of a debate. If you don't set this, it will use dev random on startup. Which can block and make Tomcat startup slower, but not a ton slower, but it, it's noticeable, but it's technically uh, more secure, but no, but no one has shown a way to break the results of you random which is faster. 
for more details, Let's see. Go read this you random post. It's pretty good. Now, what it's basically saying. Now, if you're in, in the development environment, don't don't set this setting I'm about to set because if I'm wrong, it's, well, I don't think I'm wrong. But if no one's again, it's kind of like when back in the old day, if you bought IBM, you're not going to get fired. If you don't set this, you're not going to get fired because everyone else in the world doesn't set this. But what happens is you, when you you need a random num generator, and from my take on the reading. And I'm no expert. Please go read this guy's rant and other people's rants to get more details. Uh, the dev random generator is a really good random generator. And when it runs out of entropy, it can block. And it'll try to build up entropy and then give you more random numbers. So it's better, but it can block. Now, you random will actually use the random number generator. It'll actually use dev random is my understanding. And, but then when it gets to the point where it blocks, it uses a faster algorithm to get random numbers. Now that faster algorithm, according to this guy's post, no one's figured out how to crack it anyway. So even though it's quote unquote less secure, no one's cracked it. So if you want to use uRandom, and you may just want to use uRandom on your dev boxes. No, I should say dev box. Well, you may just want to use uRandom on your test boxes or when you're doing some tests because it'll start up faster. So I'm just going to set it like this, but in production environments, I'm not, um, just to kind of cover my butt. But if you, but it's one of those things, no one's broken it, well, then what's the problem? But people argue and go back and forth. So we do dot you random. You random. So that's going to use you random and it'll start up faster. But again, in production, in live, just don't use it because someone's going to come back and argue and da 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 da. Okay, Catalina Ops. So that's it for Java Ops. Okay, these are basically as far as. Tomcat's concerned, Java Ops, but only used by Tomcat. And only run on Tomcat start. See, I got a URL for this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do a JMX remote. Turn on the JMX remote so you can use J console. Or more likely, uh, Visual VM. Da, 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 da. Uh, to monitor. Under the JVM remotely. Let's see, and I got a few of these links. And so I'll do an export Catalina ops. You know, I need to copy this because these are kind of. I'm going to type them wrong. Okay. So what this does, you turn on the JMX remote, uh, you set a port, in this case I set port 9090, uh, set the authentication to false and SSL to false, uh, let's see, and this gets the local IP, oh, you need to know your local IP address, so I did this too, you can do IP address equals IP route dot get dot eight dot eight dot eight hawk print in half in half and exit right oops there we go 
So that should get your local IP address, which you need for this. Again, I'll have to copy this because I'll type it in wrong. Okay, because you need your local IP, it needs to, the JMX uh, needs to know your local IP address, otherwise the visual, you can't get into it. Okay, so a few more last bits and pieces. Catalina, home, Tomcat 8, and export. Let's see if the format looks a little funny here. I guess that's right. Uh, Catalina out equals 10x13 logs Tomcat 8 Catalina.pid and export Catalina pid equals bar run Tomcat 8, which that folder should already exist, and the pid should exist. Okay. Good. Let me see if it actually runs now. So we got it running. Uh, I did have to reboot the box, so it might be running right now. Let me see. Yep, it's running. So let me see if I can kill it. Pseudo. Now I can do that. Um, it's time to get it. Permission denied. Oh, set environment's not found. Uh, oops, time to get it. And exports not found. Like I must have set something wrong with my environment variable. Let me see. There we go. But I had an exports error, so on line 51. Oh, there we go. That's definitely wrong. And I had 156. Oh, there's something it doesn't like here. Okay, it's saying I have a unterminated quote string. Oh, there we are. Okay. Can't see. There we go. Yeah, it did look wrong. On export path, I put a semicolon rather than a colon. We'll start it. It'll start. Uh, in fact, let me go shrink this a little bit and move this guy over. And let's see, pseudo service Tomcat 8. Stop it. Okay, we can stop it, and I should be able to come over here and tail the log. Mm -hmm. Catalina out. All right. Okay, let's see if it's doing what it should be doing. There we go. We have a log. Yay. And start up in two seconds. Okay. So I think we are good. There we go. So I brought that up. So 1921, this, this box happens to be at uh, this address, 1958080, and there is the Tomcat box. So there's still some more settings to do, but I just wanted to prove that, hey, it did. Well, let me, let me stop it just to show you that it's, that's the one. And it's dead. Start it. And it takes a couple seconds. And there you go. Okay, what else do I want to do right here? Um, I can do the pseudo service. I can do status. I can do, I didn't do very well. Status.
how'd you give me the status? Start, stop, status, and I did not put status in here, did I? Huh. Okay, I'm an idiot. How about you put status in here? There we go. There's our PID. So status is working. There's a few now we gotta do a few more things. To go to the third part of this video, click the link here. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was useful to you. If it was, please give it a like. To subscribe, just click the subscribe button. Also, you can follow me on Twitter under the handle at whiteboardcoder. View any code I may have put up as a gist on GitHub under the username Patman Denver, or check out my blog at whiteboardcoder.com.